Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about finding domain and range. And specifically, we're going to be putting all our answers in the form of interval notation. So the first thing we want to understand right from the beginning is what is domain and what is range. Domain is just another way of saying the x values. Other common words are input and the independent. We will always read domain on a graph from left and then right. For our range, that's all of our y values. So we're focusing on the y axis. It's also known as the output or the dependent. We read the range from bottom and then top. So really, all you need to know to be able to answer domain and range for interval notation is that we're going to use brackets. So it could be a bracket facing this way or this way, depending on the situation. We use brackets for solid points and solid lines. So if you ever see a solid line, that's made up of solid points. So it always won't be like a point on the graph, but a solid line counts as a solid point. We'll also use parentheses, and we use parentheses for if we have an open point. We also use parentheses if we use a negative infinity or a positive infinity. The reason we would use parentheses and not brackets is because the open circle shows a non-included point. Infinity is more of an expression. It just means that it keeps going on for infinity. Infinity is not a place or a point that we reach, which is why we always use parentheses like our non-included points for infinities. The last thing we'll need to know to be able to answer each of these questions is what is a function? So a function is a relation where x does not repeat. Each of our graphs, in order to be a function, they have to pass the vertical line test. So we use a vertical line test to see, does the graph cross our pin more than once when we hold our pin in a vertical line? I think it's a little easier to understand once we actually see it in a problem. So let's dive right into some examples. When we look at this first example, the first thing that they're going to ask us for is the domain. Now remember, we said domain is our x values. So when we look at domain, we're looking at the x axis values. We do not care about the y axis at all when we're doing domain. Remember that we also said we read domain from left to right, okay? So when we read it from the left, we're gonna just take our pin and pull in and we ask ourselves, what's the first place that we hit? Now, some students would say, oh, we're hitting at negative three. But here's the thing. That's where our blue arrow looks like it's, you know, at a stopping point. But here's the thing. It's an arrow. And arrows keep going on forever. It doesn't stop there at negative three. It's going to keep going on and on to infinity. So we're going to use a parenthesis. And because it's on the left, it's going to be negative infinity. For our x-axis, this direction is negative infinity. This direction is positive infinity. We read from the left. Now let's read from the right. What's the first place I touch? Another arrow. This time it's pointing in this direction, so it's going to be positive infinity. And how we show this is we put a comma and then we put positive infinity. Now you don't need to do a plus for positive. Sometimes people do and that's fine. But by just putting infinity, it's understood that it's positive. And remember, infinities always get parentheses. So that is our domain for this graph. It reads from negative infinity to positive infinity. Another way to say negative infinity to positive infinity is using this symbol right here. I always think of it as a double lined R. We do two lines and then we put an R. 
And what that stands for is all real numbers. That's another way to say the same thing. It's just a little less writing and a little shorter. So you may see that symbol. You could also write out all real numbers if you wanted to. That's fine too. But either one of these answers is acceptable if it is a negative infinity to a positive infinity. It has to be both. Okay, so let's look at the range now. So remember, range is our y values, and we read the range from bottom and then the top. So now we're looking at our y-axis. We don't care about x anymore, just y. So we always read from the bottom and we pull up. What's the first place we hit? We hit an arrow. Arrow means infinity. Now because we're on the left side, right, this is going down, we call it negative infinity. Okay, now we read from the top. And what's the first place we hit? Another arrow. An arrow means infinity. It's on the right side of our answer and it's pointing up. So it's called positive infinity. Now notice again, we've got negative infinity to positive infinity. So if we wanted to, if we recognize that early, we could also just put our answer as all real numbers. A good thing to note here is if it confused you at all with, oh, I'm not sure if I should use negative infinity or positive infinity. If it's on the left, it's always going to be negative infinity. And if it's on the right, it's always going to be positive infinity. Okay, now we ask ourselves, is this a function? So now we're going to that must pass the vertical line test. What the vertical line test is, is you use an, a great object to use is your pen because your pen can form a perfect vertical line. And we take the vertical line and we run it through the graph. And what we're testing is does the blue line hit my pen more than once at a time? And if we run it through, we see no, it's only ever hitting my pen once at a time. So yes, this is a function. Let's do another one. So for domain, for this one, remember we read domain left and then right. So when I read from the left, what's the first place I hit? I hit an arrow, and an arrow means infinity. Now it's on the left, so we know it's going to be negative infinity. And remember, infinities always get parentheses. Let's see what happens on the right. So we're going to come in from the right. What's the first place we hit? Another arrow. So we know arrow means infinity. And because it's on the right, we know it's going to be positive infinity, and it gets a parenthesis. And because we got that double infinity, we could say all real numbers if we wanted to. For our range, remember range, we start from the bottom. And what's the first place we hit? Okay, this is the first time we haven't hit an arrow. So what did we hit? Well, if we're looking at our y-axis, remember, we don't care about x at all. We're doing the range. So when we look at the y-axis, what is that first place we hit? A negative 2. So then we ask ourselves, okay, is it a solid point at negative 2 or is it an open point? Now, I will say if it's an open point, it will very obviously be an open point, kind of like this. This is just a solid line. So remember, solid lines get brackets. So our piece with the negative 2 will get a bracket. Now let's see what happens when we come from the top. What's the first place we hit? Now in this case, we hit two arrows. And that doesn't matter. As long as you hit one arrow, two arrows, it doesn't matter. An arrow going up means positive infinity, which always gets a parenthesis. So we could not do an all real number symbol here because we don't have double infinity. We've got positive infinity, but over here we didn't. We could not say all real numbers. Now is this a function? Does it pass the vertical line test when we pass our pin through it? It's only ever hitting my pin once at a time? So yes. This is a function. Okay, for this next example, when we ask for our domain, 
and we look from the left, the first place we hit is an open circle. And where is that open circle? Remember, domain means x, so we're looking at the x. It falls at negative 2. So remember, open circles get parentheses. So we're going to do a parenthesis, negative 2. Let's see where we end up on the right. So when I pull in from the right, what's the first place I hit? It's a solid point at positive 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, solid points get brackets. For our range, let's look from the bottom up. What's the first place we hit? It's an open circle at negative 1. Remember, for range, we care about the y-axis, not the x. So we hit negative 1. And open circles always get parentheses. And then when we measure from the top, What's the first thing we hit? It falls at 1, 2, 3, positive 3. We look at the y-axis. And it is a solid point at positive 3, so it gets a bracket. Now, is this a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, that red line is only touching our vertical line once at a time. Let's look at some more examples. This one looks very different from all the other graphs and from the ones we did on the first page. This one just has random points. Now, what we should not do, but what I see a lot, is people want to just like connect the dots and make their own line. We don't want to do that, right? We are just given points, not any type of line. So we do not connect them. But these ones are actually the easy ones, I think. For domain, they're just asking for all the x values. So all we need to do is list in a set. And here's how we do a set. We do this little brace symbol. And what we're going to do is list out every x value. So the easiest way to do this is to look at each point, kind of starting from the left and moving to the right. Look at each point and write its x value. So for this first one, its x value is negative uh, 3, right? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. It's a terrible 3. And then the next point we cross would be this one, and that one falls at negative 2. So we write negative 2. Our next point would be here, which falls at negative 1. Remember, we're looking at the x axis. Our next point would be here, which falls at 0 on the x-axis. Our next point would be here, that falls at positive 1. And our last point would be here, which falls at positive 3. And now that we've listed out all the x values that we see, we close our brace. And you're done with your domain. Now for the range, we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to list out all the y values of each point. So again, we just create our brace. It's showing that this is a set we're creating. And let's start from the bottom and move up. So this lowest point, what is it on the y-axis? Because range means y. So on the y-axis, it's falling at negative 3. Our next point up would be this one here. What is it on the y-axis? It falls at negative 1. Our next point would be both of these, right? They're even along the y-axis, and they both are falling where y is 0. So we do not need to write 0 twice. We only need to write 0 one time. That covers both of those points. Now this one, our next point up, would fall at positive 2. And our last point would fall at positive 3. And then our range is done. Now is it a function? So when we have just random points, what we want to do is just kind of at each point just make sure is each point only crossing my vertical line once, right? We don't have any repeat x values. 
And in this case, we don't. So yes, this is a function. For this example, when we do our domain, we're going to go back to reading left to right. So when we come in from the left, what's the first place we hit? It's a solid point at negative 2. Remember, we're looking at the x-axis for domain. So a solid point gets a bracket, negative 2. Now when we come in from the right, what's the first place we hit? It's an arrow, and an arrow means infinity. It's on the right, so it is a positive infinity, and infinities always get parentheses. Now for our range, let's go from the bottom up. So the first place I hit is a solid point at negative 2. So we get a bracket, negative 2. When we come in from the top, I've purposely made this one a little tricky because a lot of people may say, oh, the first place we hit is a positive 4. And if you just glance at it, they'd be right. That does look like the highest place on our graph. But we see this arrow down here. Now that arrow is going to keep going up forever. It's not going to stop at positive 4. It's going to go up forever. So this one is actually positive infinity with a parenthesis. So sometimes they try to trick you, and the first thing you touch isn't actually the answer. So you want to make sure you're looking at the picture as a whole. Now, is this one a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, it does. So yep, it is a function. This next example is probably the hardest one on the sheet. When we do domain and we pull in from the left, the first place we hit is an arrow. So we can go ahead and do our parenthesis, negative infinity, because it's on the left, and our comma. Now before we immediately jump over and come in from the right, we need to notice something. We've got an open circle in this graph. And it's happening where x is 0. x is 0 right here. And that is a, what we call a hole in the graph, okay? Because it looks like it's going to be an all real numbers, but yet we have this hole here. And that hole is a non-included point. So there's a formal way that we could write this, and then there's kind of like an easier informal way. So I'm going to start by showing you the formal way. We got our negative infinity on the left. And then what's happening is it's all real numbers until we hit this hole. That hole is occurring at 0. So we're going to put 0. And it is a non-included point. It's an open circle. So we're going to close it with a parenthesis. Now, the graph picks back up with a solid line. And it continues on for infinity this way. So we can show that the formal way is by putting a U, a capital U, which stands for a union, and then showing the second part. So the second part picks up at zero. It's a non-included point, so again, it gets a parenthesis. And it goes all the way to our right side, which is an arrow infinity. And it's on the right, so it's going to be positive. And infinities always get parentheses. That is the formal way to answer. Now, the informal kind of shorthand way would be to say this graph goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So I'm going to do like a little or because this is our other option. So we could go negative infinity to positive infinity, but we just need to add this restriction here that x cannot equal 0. So we could just add either below it or beside it, we could add x cannot equal 0. So again, formal way, less formal way. So the range, remember we read bottom first, and we hit a double arrow, right? So negative infinity with a parenthesis. And when we read it from the top coming down, the first place we hit is an open circle at positive 3. 
So we can put positive 3, and it, because it's an open circle, it gets a parenthesis. Now, is this a function? Well, does it pass the vertical line test? It sure does. So yes, it is a function. For this example, when we do the domain and we start from the left and pull in, the first place we hit is actually a solid line, right? But it's a solid line at negative 3 on the x-axis. So remember, solid lines get brackets. And it is at bracket negative 3. And then when we read this from the right, we hit another solid line at positive 3. And again, solid lines get brackets. When we do the range, we see that the first thing we hit is a solid line at negative 2. So we have a bracket negative 2. And then from the top, we also hit a solid line at positive 2. So solid lines get brackets. Now, is this one a function? So far, all of our graphs have been functions, but for this one, we finally get to see one where it's not a function, and let me show you why. When we run our vertical line through the graph, do you see that it hits, the purple line hits the pen more than once at a time? If that happens even once, right here it happens throughout the entire graph, but if it happens even once, this is not a function. For our next example, when we come in from the left, we first hit a solid point, and on the x-axis, that solid point falls at negative 4. So we go bracket negative 4. And then when we come in from the right, the first thing we hit is a solid. This is more like a solid line. We don't see like a definitive point, but it is a solid point there. And it's a solid point at positive 4. So it also gets a bracket. Now, I know some people may be wondering, but wait, there's an open circle in there. Kind of similar to this one where we talked about how there was a hole in the graph that we needed to address in our answer. Now for this one though, we actually don't. And the reason why is even though we have this open circle, and remember it's the x values we're looking at, this one has an open circle at negative 2. But if we look, this graph also extends up here at negative 2, and it's a solid line. So that solid line actually covers that open circle. So even though it's open here, it's not a true hole in our x values because it's covered by that solid line up here. See, we didn't have that here. It was just an open circle, and there was nowhere else on our x-axis that covered it where x was 0. So a little bit of a different situation here. Now for our range, when we pull up from the bottom, the first thing we hit is a solid line. Now again, it's got this open circle here, but a solid line wins over an open circle. This one would get a bracket. And where is it a bracket? Well, where is that solid line? It's at negative 3. Now when we pull from the top, what's the first place we hit? A solid point at positive 4. Is it a function? Well, does it pass? The vertical line test and right here we say nope right all through here it would hit my vertical line more than once so this one is not a function okay let's do one last example together for this one our domain when we pull from the left what's the first place we hit well it's a solid point where x is negative 3 so we have a bracket negative 3 and then when we look from the right, the first thing we hit is an arrow. And an arrow means infinity. It's on the right, so it's positive. And infinities always get a parenthesis. 
For our range, this one could be kind of tricky. When we pull up from the bottom, the first thing we hit, now we hit a lot here, right? We hit a solid point here. We hit a solid line here, which those are equivalent, so no big deal. But then a lot of people may get confused because they see we also hit an arrow. Now, this arrow's a little different though. This is not an arrow pointing down. Remember, for range, we're looking at the y axis. This arrow is pointing to the right, and it's going straight out to the right. So, this one is not an infinity for our range. For our range, we do not go below this line of where y is negative 1. And it is a solid point at negative 1 here and with this solid line here. So, we do a bracket negative 1, and then when we pull down, the first place we hit is this solid, this little like tip top of this curve right here, which falls where y is 0. And again, it is a solid line, so it gets a bracket. Is it a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, so it is a function. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. I will post the answers in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.